to share with you tonight or uh, today um, the Holy Spirit um, being the the law in our hearts. The Holy Spirit is kind of like a glove. It's like a surgical glove. It the Word of God is um, sharper and more powerful than any two-edged sword, able to sunder both soul and spirit, even to the dividing of both bone and marrow, and a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And I believe that's Hebrews 4:11. I'm not sure, but and I'm not sure I might not said it right, so please look it up, okay? But this is what what this teaching is about today. It's about the Holy Spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit is like um, the law in us, okay? The law in us um, has ten body parts, just like us. We have uh, our head, our torso, our two arms, our two legs, our two hands, and our two feet. So the Holy Spirit, just like us, is a body. The body in us, okay? Jesus in us, the Holy Spirit in us. Okay, so so this is what's um, what we have to understand is we can quench the Holy Spirit, and how you quench him is you think it doesn't apply. If you think any of the ten body parts doesn't apply, and you can just cut them off uh, and get rid of them, um, then then you mistakenly uh, you don't know who Jesus is. And so, so Jesus is our heavenly husband, and the reason we obey him is because we love him, okay? And we keep the ten rules of faith because we love him. The Holy Spirit is the ten rules of light. You, you can't fall from grace unless you quench the light in you. We have Jesus, the ten rules of faith, living in us at the moment that we receive the Spirit of God in our hearts. His ten body parts have now become one with us as the bride of Christ. Now we have to get to know our husband. Now how do we get to know our husband? We get to know our husband by the voice of God. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. He, he tells us, don't lie, don't lie. And if we tell little white lies or we exaggerate, we are quenching the Holy Spirit. And we can harden our heart to the point that we cut off one of the hands of God. And so we only have nine body parts left, okay? If we steal, if we steal a little, if, we, if there's a penny laying on the floor and we steal it, we can harden our heart uh, through disobedience and we can quench the Holy Spirit. So we can cut off that hand, which says do not steal, okay? So we have, um, we have eight more rules, okay? These are rules. These are the law in our hearts. Uh, the, it says, love thy Lord, thy God, with all thy heart, thy body, thy soul, and thy mind, your mind. So we have, to, um, we have to love God. And the only way we can love God is to obey Him. If He's our husband, we need to obey Him. Um, now, how is, it, how is it that we really get to know God? Okay? By obedience. We suffer when we have to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it's not easy to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it's a very, very struggle. It's a hard thing to do. Faith is the light. If you take away the ten rules, you have cut off faith. Um, moths in the Bible um, are symbolic of Christians who once had the light but quenched it through disobedience. The moth is like the butterfly. It flies and it looks like a butterfly. It's even drawn to the light. But the, the moth destroys the work of God. Uh, Matthew 6.20 says, But lay up your treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Um, so moth eat the covering, the covering of wool. Okay, Jesus is the little innocent lamb that covers, up, covers us in our sins. If we say we have no sin, we lie, and the truth is not in us. Jesus is the law that covers us. The moth is in darkness. The butterfly is in the day. He, the butterfly uh, uh, does not fly at night. He flies in the day. Hypocrites are not concerned with saving souls. The butterfly is symbolic of the Christian that feeds others. He goes from flower to flower, and he doesn't even try to feed others, but it just happens that way because the nectar on his feet he brings um, to, other, to other flowers, and he pollinates the flowers. And So the butterfly is symbolic of the Christian that wins souls. The moth is the, uh, symbolic of the, the Christian 
that is the hypocrite, that is not concerned with saving souls. Um, they have turned away and quenched the faith by destroying the law in our hearts. John 7, 19 says, Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why you go about to kill me? Uh, Jesus is asking, why are you killing me? Or dissecting the law in our hearts. Okay? Because the body of Christ is uh, in our, our temples. Okay? He's the light in our temples. That's the faith. Um, Christ only dwells in our heart when we make him our husband and obey him. This is faith because we love him. Ephesians 3.16 that, um, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Okay, might by his spirit in the inner man. That's a power. And that's what's missing in the church is no power. The power is faith. We have to have faith to move mountains. Um, verse 17 says that um, Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you may be rooted and grounded in love. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is light with power. Ephesians 2.8 For by grace you are saved through faith. And that's how we're saved, through faith. If we don't have faith, we're like the moth and we, we're destroying the work of God. And that it's not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Now it is, in parentheses, it is impossible to please God without faith. Obedience produces faith when mixed with love. Hebrews 5.8 Though he were a son, yet he learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Wives suffer when they obey their husbands. The voice of the Holy Spirit is not always easy to obey. We suffer when we obey the word. And people are mean sometimes. We have to control our tongue at times to be Christ-like. James 3, 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offended not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. This is our works at producing the fruit of the Spirit, which is self-control, gentleness, purity, pure, peaceable, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. The moth is a hypocrite. The moth teaches that you don't have to obey the law. Um, now, that is totally opposite of what Jesus says. Jesus says in, in John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Okay, so uh, faith without the obedience to the voice of God is dead faith. The Holy Spirit's voice is telling us to be kind and to walk in love. This is what the moth demonstrates when they destroy the covering of the innocent little lamb is dead faith. Little lamb, which is the blood of Jesus, who is a law in our heart. Um, the, the moth um, does not love his neighbor. And he does not love God. Because if you don't love your neighbor, then you don't love God. So God wants us to love um, people and love him. That's the fulfilling of the whole law. But if we love our neighbor, we're not going to um, commit adultery with our neighbor's um, husband or wife, okay? If we love our neighbor, we're not going to lie to them. If we love our neighbor, we're not going to steal from them. The Holy Spirit's telling us all the time, don't, don't lie, don't lie, don't steal. Don't covet that brand new car over there. You don't need that car. You're fine with your old car. So the Holy Spirit's talking to us. That's the voice of God. Uh, John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. And um, Job 33, verses 14 and 15 says, God speaketh once, yea, twice, and man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep slumbering falls upon man, in, in his bed. Now, you'll have to check that out, because I might have said that wrong. Job 33, verses 14 and 15. See, in the Old Testament, people don't understand it, because they don't keep the commandments. The commandments are in our heart. That's hearing the voice of God. Abram heard the voice of God in Genesis 12, 1, and he didn't even know where he was going, and God told him to leave his country, get thee out of thy country, away from thy kindred, to a place I will show you. He didn't even know where he was going. And that's, that's hearing the voice of God and obeying, even though it sounds a little crazy. Okay, Jesus told Peter to go catch the first fish, and the first fish he caught, he told him to pull out a gold coin. 
Now, um, now I'm sure there was a lot of people around Peter, and he probably thought, um, oh, man, this is going to be embarrassing if I go catch that fish. And, you know, so I'm going to believe God. I'm going to believe God because he told me it was there, so I'm going to believe him. So faith without works is dead. Peter could have said, well, I don't think I'm going to go, and he would not have had faith. But Peter, Peter went, and he, he caught that fish, and that fish had a gold coin in his mouth. So, so faith is what pleases God. Um, so they that are in the flesh cannot please God. That's Romans 8.8. 8. So if we're in the flesh and we decide we want to lie still, uh, commit adultery, we want to um, covet, uh, if we're, if we're um, in the flesh, then we're going to do things on the outward appearance, okay? The, uh, God wants us to obey Him out of love, okay? And he, the voice tells us so we can obey Him out of love, okay? If we wear dresses, it's because we love God. <coughs> he, he's spoken to us and He tells us to um, obey Him. So if we love God, we're just going to obey Him. And we do it because we love God, not because we have to. You be blessed. I hope that this teaching is going to be a good teaching for you. The Holy Spirit lives in us if we obey. If we don't obey, we quench the light. And that's the light of faith. And um, in um, Isaiah 8.20, it said, To the law and to the testimony. Um, and so I want you to look that up because um, I kind of drew a blank on what it says. But um, it's... Um, it's if they speak not according to the word, it's because there is no light in them. I believe that's how it goes. So uh, we need to speak according to the word. And the Old Testament is God's word, okay? Uh, the reason um, part of it has is, is already been fulfilled, that's love, okay? We don't stone our neighbor if he doesn't keep the Sabbath. But God wants us to keep the Sabbath out of love. That's, this is the Sabbath right here. God wants us to, to keep the Sabbath because we love Him. And if we love Him, we will keep His commandments. That's what He tells us over and over in the New Testament and in the Old Testament. So uh, uh, Paul even says, does the law become void? Of course not. It's, it's strengthened. And I believe that. I may, I may be wrong about that. I think it's Romans 3.31. But you be blessed, and I pray to God that, that you get a hold of this because if we cut off any of the body parts of, of God then we are cutting off the power supply and we, we better not cut off the power supply because if there's no light in us Jesus very well may say um, I don't know you because knowing God is being uh, faithful to God and, and loving God and, and being, um, being a light for others to come to the light um, the in uh, John uh, three nineteen, it says, "This is the condemnation that that the light came into the earth, and that men love darkness more than the light, for their deeds were evil." Now I don't know if I said that right, but that's John three nineteen. So I hope that I said it right. If not, you know, go back and look it up because um, uh, I I didn't bring my Bible. I don't got it right with me. I have it, but not with me. Okay. So I I pray to God that this helps you realize that the light in us can be quenched and if we if we quench it we're going to be like the moths we don't want to be like the moths god bless you thank you